All right, so what is visual clutter? It's basically any unorganized space like messy surfaces, countertops, and even drawers. In other words, too much of everything. Why would you want to reduce visual clutter? To focus better, to reduce stress, so there's less to clean, and it can also visually increase the size of your house or apartment. So if you're interested how to do that, my name is Julia and in today's video I'll share 10 ways how you can reduce visual clutter in your home. If you're new to my channel, I talk a lot about minimalism and home decor. So if you're interested in those subjects, make sure you hit that red button and let's get started. I wanna start with kitchen counters. There are a couple things you can do. Remove all the appliances that you don't use on an everyday basis. For example, can opener, blender, maybe toaster if you don't use that every day and leave only what you use like for example, a coffee machine or water filter. By the way, less quartz and wires in your kitchen will look a lot better too. That's another tip when you want to remove visual clutter. Step number two, move food to the pantry or cabinets. Move any medications or tea boxes from the counters. That's what cabinets are for. Next, remove all the unnecessary decor. By that, I mean things that your kids made out of Play-Doh and gifted you, or too many cooking books, souvenirs. And finally, remove all the magnets and photos from your fridge. It's a huge piece and by clearing it up, it can definitely reduce visual clutter in your kitchen. We're moving to nightstand. What do you actually need there? Maybe a book, maybe a lamp, um, your phone, a lip balm. I can't think of anything else I would need, but this could be totally different for you. Just try to limit the amount of things you have there. The less you have on there, the better it will feel. Next, simplify wall decor. Certain pieces of wall decor can easily make your house look more cluttered. I'm definitely not a fan of my daughter's art all over the house or all kinds of printed photos in different styles of picture frames. But at the same time, a good quality photo from a photo shoot can definitely add a nice touch to your home. When it comes to wall art, I stay away from landscapes and paintings that are too colorful and stick to neutral pieces. By the way, Target has really cool ones and they're very affordable. I also find natural colors very comforting and relaxing. This painting has neutral green and a little bit of this blush pink that we also have in our interior. And it feels to me like it belongs there. A little tip here, a lot of the time going for bigger piece of wall art instead of many little ones can really reduce visual clutter as well. And we're moving to the next tip, stick to a certain color palette in your home. For example, in our house, it is white, light gray, and blush pink. You can see these colors in kitchen sets, family room, and even our bedroom. My husband's office has a little more color because that's what he likes, but we still stick to this rule. You can see dark blue, green, and gold details. We were able to find some office decor that has these colors to make it look like part of the same style, but sticking to neutrals in other parts of the interior, like the curtains or this little seating area, so it looks like it's still in the same style as the rest of the house. The way I see it, base color should be neutral and then you add a little accent. And ideally, I would stick to one accent color, but two could also look really good sometimes. If you're trying to create a more relaxing space, try to avoid adding too many prints. Here, I'm mostly talking about bedding and towels or some throw out blankets and uh, cushions you might have in the living room. So when it comes to towels, I prefer all white. So we have all white matching towels in the whole house, except the Little Mermaid one, of course. <laughs> but the uh, kids are kids, so we're not even getting into that. Do I need to mention that toys all over the house also create visual clutter? Um, we do have a rule, no toys in a living room for our daughter, but that was not the case when we lived in one bedroom apartment. So I feel like uh, in a smaller space, organization, like really good organization, could uh, make a big difference. Also, I feel like limiting the amount of toys our kids have is a great approach and they really don't need that much. Well, this was it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new here and I can't wait to see you next week. Please give this video a like because that supports my channel 
so much. I'll see you next time.